folks, Captain Mike here from Salty Cape. Today I'm heading out and got a little bit of a late start. As you can see, it's a beautiful June day and I have some friends with me coming out. We're here in Hokie HQ, right here in Vineyard Sound, technically leaving Falmouth Harbor. But we're gonna do a little bit of a tour today and fish both Vineyard and Nantucket Sound. We have anglers from pretty much no fishing experience at all to moderate level of fishing experience and of course to um, expert level, me, yours truly, hosting this trip. And so we have our hoagie system, got the whole trip consolidated to a single mesh crate, four casting rods and a couple of trolling rods. And we're gonna hit all the usual spots. Now Murphy's Law is when you have a, a late start, you always um, come into slack tight. So I got my work cut out for me today. We're gonna go through the hoagie system. We're gonna work the playbook. And we're gonna find some fish. Well, today is a mix of um, stripers and good to eat ground fish. So we're fishing on people schedules, not tide schedules today. So Murphy Law has it that we're out at slack tide. Uh, typically you want moving current really doesn't matter if it's uh, low going to high or vice versa but the key is moving current which we don't have so the game plan was a mix of um, light tackle striper fishing and ground fishing for sea bass my favorite for dinner and so we're going to reverse the order sea bass are a little more forgiving um, in a slack tide as long as you find good structure so we're going to start there and um, then once the tide gets going we're going to go after some nice fun topwater striped bass Today we're going to use the Hoagie Groundfish Beaky Jig. Now a lot of folks would think that this design is um, you know, purely a tog jig, a tatog jig. And yes, certainly it was designed with that in mind and it's designed to fish on the bottom with a crab, a uh, live crab or cut crab with bait for tatog. But we also put the beaky hair and beaky crystal flash that we have on our jig beaky teasers, um, our beaky or teaser assist hooks. So it's that same beaky platform we have in a number of other systems here at Hoagie Lures. And uh, so the beauty of this jig is sure, you can fish it on the bottom of the crab for tatog, but here we are on some boulders that we're gonna drop down for tatog, uh, for sea bass. We don't need any bait at all. We have this extra motion, this extra flash from this hair. We're just gonna thump this jig on the bottom. In my opinion, I think it looks like a crab on the bottom. And uh, out of all the bait I've ever seen a sea bass cough up on a deck, it's almost always a, cra a, a, a crab or a baby lobster. So they do love crustaceans. Now I'm gonna fish just looking at some good fish in the finder. So I'm gonna just tie one beaky jig direct on the rod and set it down. And then it is slack tied. So I'm gonna um, put a jig beaky teaser rig above this lure and you'll see how the system all ties together. So what I like to do, if you leave a rod's length of line, if you lift the tip, that gives me the room to just grab the fish. Now this is a good size sea bass. And these are super delicious. Oh. So you'll come home, flays, no skin, all ready to go, you just straight to the pan. I don't believe me. I couldn't have done it without the hoagie <laughs> system. And uh, here we go. I'm just going to jump the gun. I'm not fully ready, so I'm going to uh, catch up here if you want to send it back and get another one. We've got all kinds of stuff, including uh, my jig beaky rig. Now, sea bass can be very aggressive. You don't always need the teasers, but we are fishing a slack tide, so I'm going to give us a little extra edge with a jig beaky rig. And I always keep these handy in my mesh crate because anytime I go to ground fish jig I keep them stored in this little roll up mesh bag and uh, you know I think the 3.0 crystal size is probably the most common the most popular so either 3.0 or 5.0 size will work for sea bass. Um, what I have on top here is a 3.0 so that's what I'm going to start on. 
It's a very effective rake, particularly when the sea bass are being finicky. Uh, but when it's hot and heavy, sometimes I just prefer catching them one at a time uh, with the single jig beaky rig. We're going to fish these both ways. And um, if we need to stay with the jig beaky rig, we'll do that. If we can downsize just to the single jig, which is easier to de-hook, great. But either way, we're hoping to bring home dinner. really no wrong way to fish these. We're just bouncing them along the bottom. This is Graham's first time sea bass fishing. He's already put one on the boat before me. I'm catching up. Nice fish. That's a good size sea bass. And again, I think they just think this is a crab just thumping along the bottom. It's got lots of action with that hair. And just caught it right in his lip. That's a beauty. Yeah, nice, nice big fish. They're beautiful, beautiful sea bass. Excellent eating. Right on the edge of the lip there. So we just finished a nice little drift. And it's a great action. Some big sea bass, but the fish are already getting smaller. So I'm just gonna pick back up and go right back to where we found that juicy structure and those great marks. So this is a great style of fishing to do when you have company, say folks that are new to fishing. And so it's pretty easy, it's replicable. Um, you know, if you just keep making the same drift, you know what the outcome's gonna be. The fishing's good. Um, you don't even need bait, you just need, you know, jigs and teasers that look alive. Um, I like to think the beaky system looks very alive. Of course, I'm biased with that, but it's easy. It's, you, you don't even need a perfect tide. Now, when this tide gets going, it's gonna be primo, but it's good enough now. It's a perfect opportunity to get my anglers broken in and then also buy a little time for the peak tide for where we're gonna go next for striped bass. But it's just a nice, easy, fun fishery. So we're beaky rig version one and just straight ground fish beaky jig one. So we're tied. Point is either way we're catching fish and you know I think in the long run the extra teasers will increase your odds. Just having a simple jig on the bottom with no teaser certainly lower maintenance and easier. I just had a hit. Sometimes they pick it up on the drop, just like that. That's a bigger fish. So I'm just using the medium light Hoagie System inshore rod. It is very soft and very parabolic. It's designed for casting lightweight lures for striped bass and bonito. But it's actually an excellent ground fish rod with how soft and parabolic it is. It's hard to break. And uh, certainly doing the trick of these sea bass today. Whoa. That sounded like a fish. So imagining this jig replicating a crab just bouncing on the bottom. And for whatever reason, they pick it up on the drop like that right there. You feel just a little thud on the drop. It, it was still sinking, picked it up, and then just a little thud, you feel that strike. And that's when you want to do a quick hook set because they'll spit it out very quickly on the drop. It doesn't feel right. And here we go. Now this is definitely not the biggest fish of the day, but it would cooperate with a textbook opportunity to show the hit on a drop. So I'm gonna let this one go and get after a big one. As you can see from my plotter, we're making a lot of drifts around this ground zero point, the series of boulders. We got a good bottom, and lots of marks, and we're just looking at our plot lines, envisioning how the drift's gonna go. We wanna go up tide and just get the drift perfectly. Now you can see the marks and the structure right in the finder. 
That's what we're looking for. So you can see these drifts we're making. We're going up tide, drifting back. You can see we made some exploratory drifts, but in here that's ground zero. So we're just making lots of short drifts. And again, our tell is once we start getting the little ones, we just pick up and go and find that little rocky patch. So we're obviously in an open center console. It's designed to be excellent in any type of fishing situation. But vertical jigging for sea bass, or vertical jigging for that matter, is a great technique for any style boat. Now there's a lot of boats out here with big cabins, you know, big boats, harder to get around. Vertical jigging is great because you can have everybody in the back drifting. It's nice and easy, perfect family style fishing technique. High hook of the day came in on the teaser. Again, it's a matching system. This fish is not getting away. You can see that the teasers on this jig beaky rig match the beaky groundfish jig. It's no accident that they match. It's a nice complete system. Looks like a little cluster of bait on the bottom. And like all things hoagie, um, we're pro systems. And um, you know, it's really getting the job done. We're having a great session here at Slack Tide. All we did is find a couple of nice bowlers on the bottom, sent the jigs down, and we're getting dinner done first, then we're gonna go have fun after we get all the, all the good stuff in the live well. So we got our work done while we waited for the tide to get moving, the current to get moving. We got dinner, we got our limit. It's a beautiful sea bass. Now we're just playing, we're gonna do we're going to target some striped bass on topwater plugs, get a couple fish for everybody, and then head for the barn. So we're here at Waski. I am seeing squid getting chased by striped bass. So we're at the right place, the right time, in terms of tells, actually seeing the fish is a good one. But what we're also seeing is birds circling, gulls, seeing squid skipping out of the water. So there's a lot of squid imitations, but to me, one of my all time favorites is the Hoagie Charter Grade Popper, the five and a half inch in the amber color. You have the, all the squid colors you need in here, that translucent amber with just that little hint of pink. Now we're gonna practice catch and release today. So what I always do if I know I'm gonna release fish, I always take the aft hook, the back hook off the lure. And that's going to greatly reduce any injuries to the fish and also make it safer for me as the angler. So I took this back hook off. Now we could leave it just like that. I've filmed many a video with these boppers with just the back hook missing. But what I've been doing lately is putting, and I feel like it's more for me than for the fish, but it certainly gives the lure action. Is a, uh, and we make, Hoagie makes these little um, flags. Uh, and a flag is basically a bucktail hook without the hook. And uh, so, got this color here. It's a, just a pink and white. It's a small little flag. And it's just going to give the lure just a little more action, a little more pizzazz in the water. So it's very easy to put a flag on. You uh, take the back hook off with your split ring pliers and then with your regular pliers the flags come with an open eye and I'm just going to simply close the eye onto the lure with my pliers I can get them grabbed now you can take this flag back off later if you want to reverse it to a trouble you just open it up with your pliers but um, you know again we're catching and releasing today so I'm just going to be happy with this front hook and off I go Drop. Oh, that was a good hit. Got that guy. So he swung and I missed. I dropped it back. I'm trying to change the angle of the lure. It's a tough angle getting a hit from behind, especially when you have the back hook removed. We're drifting back in the rip. I just don't want to drift into the rip to spook the fish. I'm going to put both edges in gear to keep us out in front. I don't think this fish is big enough where I have to worry about drifting back on it. 
which of course I'll do if I have to. So we're getting this fish in. We're about ready to, once I get my hands on this fish. All right, time. Okay, now the second clock starts. We landed that fish, I didn't see the time. We noticed the fish was hooked in the corner of the mouth, no blood. We're gonna get a measurement for this fish, its length. Here in the cooler, this fish is exactly 28 inches. Now, I'm gonna have my friend Dave take a picture with me and this fish on my phone. Doesn't matter whose phone. In the foreground. Now with this fish picture, we're gonna log all the data that the Mass Department of Marine Fisheries needs. It's gonna have its approximate location, not a spot burn. It's gonna have the tide, the current, time of day, all the stuff they need to know. This fish is, okay, it's going back in the water. We got our second time stamp. Now I'm just gonna take a minute to make sure this fish is swimming aggressively. And it's ready to rock and roll. I'm just gonna let go and it took right off. So we just logged another fish, we're about to log on the got one, as part of the Massachusetts Department of Marine Fisheries Citizen Science Program, and we're tracking the survivability of catch and release striped bass. So in my opinion, the approach and technique for rip fishing is one and the same. Uh, as far as the boat and the approach is concerned, you want to stem the tide. You stem the tide meaning keeping the boat just in gear enough so you're not drifting back into the rip and you're maintaining a position in front of the rip. Now, fishing the swing is part two and that is where you cast your lure. Now, you know the fish are in the rip because they're hanging out in the rip waiting in ambush uh, for you know, in today's case, squid getting swept into the turbulent water, in which case it become very vulnerable and disoriented and easy prey. So the bass are lined up right on the edge. So a lot of people are tempted to cast right into the rip, and that will work, but it'll also result in a lot of hits that you don't hook. I like casting out into the smooth water and fishing the swing, so you're working the lure as it comes into the rip. So you want your lure to be in sort of a horizontal, position to the rip, you want the lure coming in on its side into the rip, so the fish will blast the whole body of the lure. If you're just sort of troll popping it in the rip like this, sure, you'll catch some fish, but yes, you also got a lot of hits and misses, and that obviously can be frustrating. So whenever possible, I like to cast out into the smooth water and pop the lure as it comes into the rip. Now one little interesting aside, I find the bigger fish tend to be in front of the rip, free chasing the larger squid, and then the smaller fish sort of schooled up or in the rip. But that's not always the case, but um, it is a trend I've noticed over the years. Um, so again, we're stemming the tide, holding the boat in front of the rip, in gear just enough to maintain your position, cast into the smooth water and popping it into the swing. Ideally, your lure is entering the rip in a horizontal fashion. If it doesn't, no problem, you're still in position to catch fish, but the optimal way is the smooth water broadside into the rip. I want to talk about conservation, mainly ensuring the survivability of striped bass. And so you'll see I'm hooked almost always in the front of the mouth. I've got the flag near its gill area doing zero harm to the fish. I'm going to grab the fish. Okay, time. So we just tracked how long I fought this fish for. Now the second thing we're going to focus on is hook placement and how long we have it in the, out of the water. So starting now, we're going to time how long the fish is out of the water. Again, measuring hook placement. I'm going to get this hook and I want to support the fish as much as I can. I don't want to hold it just by its mouth. I'm going to pop this hook out. Got a quick measurement, 32 inches. Now we're going to, we're going to need a photo. We're going to get a picture 
of this fish. So we're logging this fish. It's going to capture all the time of day, location, approximate location. It's not going to spot burn. So we have that. Now we're going to release it. So we're at, I don't know how many seconds. We'll log that in a second. But we're tracking it's back in the water. And so now we have two times, fight time, and how long the fish was out of water. This thing is clamping down on my thumb so I can tell it's very healthy. I'm going to send this fish right off. So let's talk about the gear today. Now today is what I would call an adventure day. You're fishing by the clock and so what I say is we're just going to fish best option. Ideally we were going to have some top water action first and then catch some sea bass on the way home but the way the moon <laughs> works is we started the day at slack tide so it was a more pragmatic option to start with sea bass and then once the tide got going we had a great afternoon top water fishing for stripers now i have my hoagie mesh crate here and this pretty much has a small representation of everything we make uh, big poppers, small poppers, big jigs, little jigs, casting jigs, vertical jigs, top water soft plastics, jig head rig soft plastics, weighted pro tails, uh, beaky rigs, beaky jigs, a little of everything. And so what I also had was four spinning rods with us today, uh, two uh, medium light, two medium heavy, and um, both with similar actions, a more moderate parabolic action. What I like about the parabolic action of these two rods this is very forgiving. For example, when you're ground fishing or vertical fishing, you don't want it, you know, too stiff of a rod or too much tip flex because you can break fish off. And if you have a big fish, sometimes it'll have an inexperienced angler. It's less prone to breaking both sides. Uh, but these outfits do great. And so I, the medium heavy, this is a rod I tend to fit vertical jig for striped bass with heavier jigs and cast with medium to large size plugs. Now here I have the five and a half inch um, hoagie charter grade popper and amber. And as we saw earlier, I re-rigged this with the hoagie flag to um, increase its catch and release performance and also add a little action in the process. Now this rod, um, you know, it says it's rated for um, up to two ounces but I've casted three and a half ounce lures with this rod all day long, no issues. So this is a good heavier duty rod. Again, any, um, any plugs over an ounce, ounce and a quarter, and uh, any vertical jigs, say two and a half ounces up to four and a half, maybe even six ounces on a vertical jig. Now this is my medium light version of the Hoagie System inshore rod. And this is the one I like throwing smaller jigs, smaller plugs, vertical jigging for sea bass, albies, bonito, schooly striped bass, perfectly fine casting plugs, say up to an ounce and a half, um, but lures as low as three eighths of an ounce. And they're both very um, utilitarian rods, very robust, very um, happy and fun to use. They're a, more of a moderate fast action which means when you're fighting a fish, you'll see a nice uniform bend throughout the rod. But that uniform bend, while it's fun to fight a fish in that way, <coughs> is very um, conducive to using a lot of different shapes and size lures. So again, as I mentioned before, I have my hoagie system here. A little of everything we make and just two each of the hoagie inshore system rods. And I had a couple of hoagie hybrid trolling rod, conventional rods ready to rock and roll, but we never ended up trolling. But I got trolling lures in here too. So in a small compact selection, we are ready to rock and roll all day long. Granted, we only used two lures today, but again, it's an adventure day. We don't know what we're gonna do. We're gonna leave it a set time and fish best options. And today the best option was a popper mimicking squid and a brownfish beaky jig mimicking a small crab on the bottom for sea bass and slack tide. So today was an awesome day. Reverse order from how I normally do it, but we had dinner, we had some awesome top water action. I can feel good that 
We took part in a really awesome study. Again, that's the Massachusetts Department of Marine Fisheries, their citizen science program in collaboration with the Got One app. And uh, we're happy to promote that as much as we can possibly promote it because we're huge fans of the project. Again, it's tracking, but I like to say their survivability of catch and release fish. We documented three fish for the study, which is awesome. And I like to say, just do document one or two. Today we did three. It is a little bit of a hassle because you need to stop and track all the times, but whatever you can get is great. And uh, well, it's time to head for the barn and clean those sea bass. And uh, thanks again, folks, for watching. Okay, so we wrapped up the day, and this is a classic one more cast situation. Two more casts, two more fish. I'm gonna redo the outtake on this one. And all I have to say is there's always time for one, sometimes two more casts. We're gonna get these fish back in the water. And thanks again for watching. See you guys out there.